What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn how to properly choose version numbers when working on packages or software so let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to talk about version numbers in this video today. How do you properly choose a version number when developing a package, a piece of software, or any system for that matter where you can have some changes and updates and new features and old features being removed? How do you choose the version number and how do you choose the next version number? So for example, let's say you have some package or some software currently running on 1.4.5. How do you decide what the next version number should be if you make some changes, for example, do you call it 1.4.6 increasing to five, or do you call it 1.5.0 increasing to four, or do you call it 2.0.0 increasing the one, the leading number? How do you decide and when do you increase another number? So even if you choose to call it 1.4.6, when is the time to call it 1.5.0? And when should you call it 2.0.0? Now, I need to say there is no right answer to this. There is no law about this. There is no international standardization, but there are versioning systems. And in this video today, we're going to look at something called semantic versioning. This is the website. You will find a link in the description down below. And this versioning system is a very reasonable, straightforward and uh, understandable system, which I think um, you should use unless you have another system that you like more. So we're going to talk about this in this video today and we're going to keep it simple and it's going to be a quick tutorial because there's not too much to talk about here. But this is important because oftentimes uh, people, especially people that develop their first package, including myself actually, uh, just use any version number that feels right. You know, they start maybe with something like 000 or 001 or maybe they start with 100. Uh, and then they just increase however they feel. They might increase the last one every time they make a small change and they might increase this one every time they make um, a larger change and then they might increase the first number when they have uh, an even larger change and they just do it the way they feel like it. Um, so semantic versioning basically calls these three positions here, major, minor and patch. And they already tell you basically what they mean. The idea is that you want to increase the last number here, the last version number, the patch number, whenever you make a fix or any small change that is backward compatible. So um, if I have a version 1.4.5 and the next version is 1.4.6, I can make a change that does not destroy any code that is written in 1.4.5. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't change much if I update to 1.4.6. Yes, I might have a bug fix, but it will not make um, any difference in my code. It will not destroy my code base if I'm using or if I build it on uh, 1.4.5. So every time you have a minor bug fix, uh, a small thing that you change, you want to increase the patch number. Now, if you have a minor functionality that is being added, so you actually do change something, you do actually add features and you do add um, new stuff to your package or to your software, but it's still all backwards compatible, then you want to increase the minor number. So whenever you change stuff about your package, whenever you add stuff, but you don't really change the API uh, interface or API is already uh, interface, but if, if you don't change the, the names and if everything's still compatible, you want to change the minor version number. You only want to change the major version number when you make a change that's incompatible, um, where, where the API basically changes and it's not backwards compatible anymore. So that people that built their system on package one point something, when they update to two point something, it will probably crash their system or their um, software that builds on your package, for example. So if it's not compatible, what you're doing, you want to increase the major number, otherwise the minor number. And for small bug fixes, you want to change the patch number. That's the basic idea here. So um, if I have a package about, um, let's use one of my packages here. Let's say I have Vitstream, uh, which is one of my packages. You can look it up on GitHub. It's actually in the zero point something version. So it's not really uh, something that you should use. But if I add a new feature, and it doesn't really destroy any of the existing features, then I should increase the minor number. So every time I add new features, so let's say the current version is something like, it's not by the way, but let's say it's 1.3.8. And I add some new functionality, and you can now do much more stuff than before, but you can still 
um, use all the stuff that was available before, then I can use or I should use 1.4.0. However, if I keep everything the same and I fix some small bugs and maybe I add some exception handling, then I should use 1.3.9. If I rework the entire package and it's completely different now, it's based on different classes with different uh, parameters and so on, then I should call the next version 2.00. That's the basic idea here. Um, now there is an extra thing to consider, uh, which actually is important in the case of Vidstream, for example, uh, the initial version is usually when you start developing 0, 1, 0. Now that is not the case, I think, for Vidstream. I think I did it unprofessionally and started with 0. Uh, 0. 0.1. But the basic idea is that when you create something, you want to start with the initial version 0, 1, 0. And as long as your major version is a 0, that means basically that everything can happen. All the rules don't really apply. You can change absolutely everything as long you're in the initial development phase. I think it says that here in the um, in the specification here as well. Here you can see it in rule four, major version zero point something is for initial developing uh, development. Anything may change at any time. The public API should not be considered stable. So when you have a package or a software running zero point something, None of these rules apply. Nothing can be trusted. Everything can change. The entire signature, uh, the entire API, everything can change because it's in the initial development phase. Once you're done, once you say, okay, this is now stable, I'm providing a public API, you can use it, uh, then you should call this, so basically when it's production ready, you should call this 1.00. That is the initial version, the initial public API version. And from now on, you should apply the rules. Minor patches, increase the last number major or actually patches increase the, uh, the, the last number um, minor changes and minor new functionalities change the second number and if you have a complete rework of the interface then change uh, the major number that's the basic idea now in addition to all that you can also use um, additional additional keywords or additional uh, labels, as it says here, for pre-release and metadata. So, for example, I think there are also examples given here. You can use stuff like 100 alpha, 100 alpha dot uh, 100 then dash 037 or X7Z92 and so on. So you can use a version number and then some um, identifier or some some additional label afterwards to indicate that this is a pre-release or alpha and then it can be treated differently and also you can use build information and so on. Um, but that's just some extra stuff that you can um, keep in mind on the side. The most important thing and this is actually all you need to learn from this video is increase the patch when you make small bug fixes, increase the minor version when you have new features that don't uh, change anything when it comes to compatibility and the major version should be changed every time the API is basically not backwards compatible. And in the initial version 0.y.z, whatever that is, you can do whatever you want, you can basically play around. And the initial version should be 0.1.0. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.